sometimes you, you hear a news story that on paper you're supposed to be like really pumped for, but you're just not, not at all. So in case you missed it, The Hollywood Reporter, which is actually pretty reliable with news stories, it's not, we got this covered. Um, they reported that Alfred Molina is pretty much confirmed to be in the next Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. And this is going on top of Jamie Foxx being cast, which was a couple months ago. Like, he's in the movie, which is just un <laughs> unfathomable. Don't you know I'm Electro? Now, a lot of people who know me well know that there isn't much in life I love more than the Raimi Spider-Man movies. I mean, my dumbass even bought the, the 4K <laughs> upgrade set, even though the transfers aren't supposed to be that good. I got the set. And if that wasn't enough, I literally have a Spider-Man 3 poster right there, right to my left. So when women come into my room, not only do they get to see a glorious Paddington 2 poster right over my bed, mind you, but they also get to have a nice look at the Spider-Man 3 poster. Needless to say, not a lot of women come in here. So you'd think I'd be really excited that Alfred Molina's coming back, but I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. If anything, I've just lost so much interest for this third Spider-Man movie. So while I love the Raimi Spider-Man movies, um, the Tom Holland ones, they're okay. I'm not a big fan of Tom Holland in general. I've made it no secret. He's he's fine, but I he's just a little twerp. He's a little a little twerp. I <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I do not like this fucking kid. So even though I'm not a big fan of Tom Holland, Homecoming is a movie I genuinely really like and it has grown on me a lot over time. I like the John Hughes kind of feel of it. I think it makes it feel distinct enough from the other Spider-Man iterations. And that's something I really liked about what Disney was doing with the whole Spider-Man brand, was that they weren't just doing, oh, we gotta do Uncle Ben again, and you know, all the same plot beats that the Amazing Spider-Man movies were doing. It, they were trying really hard to do their own thing, and I really appreciated them for that, even though I didn't think they even compared to the, the Raimi ones. So I was okay with them existing, you know, they were distinct enough, that was all fine and dandy. But now that they're crossing over back into the other Spider-Man, I just, I just don't see the point. I don't know why you need to do this. Now, even though I'm kind of in the minority as far as not loving the Tom Holland ones, something that a lot of people can agree on is that the biggest problem with that is the really forced MCU connections. A lot of people are getting frustrated with this whole narrative that Spider-Man needs this bigger, more important Marvel villain to be the father figure that they're having instead of Uncle Ben, you know? And I feel like that distracts from Spider-Man being his own character. Him having to latch onto other people is starting to become really frustrating. And what's even more frustrating is that even though Iron Man's fucking dead, he has to have Doctor Strange be the father figure in the next one. <sighs> Homecoming was so great because it was a change of pace. It didn't feel like any of the other Spider-Man movies. It was its own thing. And it felt great. Great. Spider-Man's having his own little shit. Good. But now it's changing. This whole Spider-Verse concept is really handcuffing this whole franchise. And it's confining it to being stuck in this trend of having to be in giant crossovers and giant cinematic universes. And it's just awful. I'm so sick of this. What do people say is one of the better comic book movie franchises right now? They say Deadpool is. People love those movies because they aren't concerned with being a giant universe. Like sure, they are in the X-Men universe and that's fine but they don't use that as a crutch. It isn't necessary for the movie. They're their own standalone things that don't depend on anything else going on in that whole convoluted ass X-Men universe. So the fact that the Spider-Man trilogy is turning into what I just hate, it, it's just so frustrating and it really betrays everything that I think John Watts was trying to do from the beginning. If you go back to the first movie, right? He built up Scorpion being the villain. He was the little teaser at the end of that movie, right? We didn't see him at all in Far From Home, which that was confusing already. But now that they're teasing all these villains from other past Spider-Man iterations, it's like, is there even going to be a room for that? Are they even continuing that at all? Or like, what is... It's just a mess. And I... 
I don't know what they're doing. There's so many opportunities here for this to be its own thing and for Tom Holland to finally have his own Spider-Man movie where he's just himself and he doesn't have to depend on Iron Man being, being in the shadow of Iron Man and having to rely on him for everything and having his stupid Tony Stark glasses that cause all these stupid plot beats. Fucking, I don't like Far From Home. And what's even more frustrating is that Far From Home, which I didn't love that movie at all, but it ended at a really interesting place. It had Spider-Man with his identity out in the public. That's cool, we haven't seen that in any other Spider-Man movies. That's a cool concept and maybe getting the Sinister Six in there, that'd be really cool. But now it just seems like we're gonna get into a Spider-Verse movie and, and Doctor Strange is gonna be in it, being his father figure and I, I just don't, I just don't see the point. You know, Avengers Endgame was a really solid conclusion to the whole MCU. And I feel like it should have stuck that way because now it just seems like after Thanos, oh, we just have to go bigger. And it's getting so big and so obnoxious and it just feels desperate. And I'm really not looking forward to what they're doing with this. And don't get me wrong, I will have a giant nostalgia boner when I go to see this movie and I see Alfred Molina coming back as Doc Ock. Like, I'm gonna love seeing that and probably seeing Tobey Maguire come back. That'll, of course, I'm gonna enjoy seeing that. But I don't want that. That's not what I want. Now, if they wanna do this whole crossover and maybe put it in an Into the Spider-Verse movie, I think that's a great idea. I think that'd be really cool. But the fact that you're doing this to the probably concluding entry in this Tom Holland Spider-Man trilogy, which should really be his own thing, and now you're making it so gimmicky and full of all this convolution, I just think this is the wrong approach. And it's giving me serious, like, uh, terrors, uh, flashbacks of Rise of Skywalker. And I'm not a Star Wars fan at all. I've made that no secret. But Rise of Skywalker was the most desperate and pathetic movie I've seen in recent memory. That is so reliant on fan service and cheap nods to the point where there was no good story in sight. There was nothing there and all the characters sucked. And I feel like this might be the same and we might see I mean, I love Queen Z. <laughs> we might see Queen Z get extremely sidelined and all these characters who, like Aunt May and all this stuff that we would want to see in this third movie. And it's just not there because Tobey Maguire's back and Andrew Garfield and I just, I'm not looking forward to this. I'm <laughs> and I know how pathetic it is, you know, there's so much shit going on in the world right now you know thousands of people literally dying every fucking day and i'm here bitching about a spider-man movie i i understand how ironic <laughs> that looks spider-man is one of the characters i grew up with i love this character i love seeing everything that has to do with that character but i don't like what they're doing i don't like this direction they're going and if they are going to go this full throttle big crossover event, then, I mean, don't turn back, I guess. You know, you gotta bring everyone. You gotta get, um, <laughs> you gotta bring Sandman back, who is not a bad person. You gotta bring back Topher Grace as Venom. You get Emma Stone back. Come here, Emma. I know you want some, some of this Sony and MCU cash. So if this is the full approach they wanna do, just go all out, whatever, have a good day. But I think it's the wrong one. I really think they should have made something that gives Tom Holland a really fitting conclusion to his MCU trilogy where he's finally being his own character and he can finally come into his own as Spider-Man instead of an Iron Boy <laughs> in the shadow of Tony Stark. And I swear to God, Marvel, if you decide to sideline Queen Z in this movie, I'm gonna drive my sorry ass all the way over to Hollywood and we're gonna have a little conversation. You understand me? 
You guys need to back up. I can't see the cars. Okay, back up, guys. You can't see the cars. Get the fuck out of the way. I can't see. There are cars there, motherfucker. Get out of the way. There's stops for you, dude.